fell into this patient. She's obviously young. She's, you know, in her 30s, and she wants to be glamorous and sexy. She just wants a touch-up. So she doesn't need any anti-aging. No, she doesn't. She wants to glam up and sexify, which is... <laughs> <laughs> That's a good word. So I call the Kardashian effect, but everyone is doing it now. So what's really in style now is high arch cheekbones, prominent chin, and big lips. It's a big difference than someone who is you know, um, more like 50s and 60s, and they're like, I don't want my lips to be bigger, I want them to be very subtle, I, I just want my to look a little younger. So she does not want to look younger. So what we planned for her then is exactly that. We're going to be using one of the biggest volumizers, because she really wants prominent higher cheekbones. Voluma, Juvederm okay. Voluma, exactly. Wow. And we're going to build these two cheekbones up. So she has a little bit of a nasal labial fold. You can't really tell right now okay. because she has not a lot of numbing cream and that kind of gets rid of that. And we're going to pull all this up. We're going to do prominent high arch cheekbones, which is going to make her face more angular that way. And that is the glamorous look. High arch cheekbones here with a sharp angle here. And we're going to really do her lips nice and big. In the past, she's had wrestling. Okay. And the wrestling went away really fast on her because she is an example of someone who's a fast metabolizer. So this time we're doing the wrestling lift, which normally I wouldn't put in someone's uh, lips because it is so volumizing. But she really wants big lips. Okay. So <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> you ready to get started? Ready. So obviously we're not, we're not talking about, I mean her lips are really swollen right now because of because the numbing. The, right. And because she's been icing, but normally they're about... Um, three-fourths of this size okay. and so she uses a lot of lip liner and lipstick especially darker shades to really right, accentuate to, her exactly. lip. So now we're going to do that with fillers. Um, look at how, how nice her cupid bow is so we don't have to recontour her lip we just want to sexify it okay. so that she can kind of enjoy her youth. <laughs> <laughs> Um, she works also with computers too much and so she wants this area relaxed a little bit so give us a frown and then push your forehead up See uh, all those lines? Absolutely. So we're going to um, knock out the frown because she's not going to need that. Um, she's not an actress. She's not in front of the camera. So she doesn't actually have to frown. So if she didn't have a frown, no one's going to notice that, she's, that she doesn't have a frown. So we're going to relax her forehead very lightly. We're going to start with some disport. Okay. Okay. I'll, uh, could you move your forehead up, Elf? Perfect. Go ahead and relax. Now she can't really move a whole lot because, again, the numbing cream is so strong. I've just kind of gotten used to being able to see like the minor changes because people are so frozen <laughs> just from the numbing cream. And normally you take photos before or you don't? We usually do. I think it's best to do pre-op photos. We document any kind of asymmetry. Everyone's asymmetrical. And until you start doing cosmetics, you actually don't know how asymmetrical you are. And as soon as you start doing cosmetics, you're so aware all right. of like all the <laughs> millimeters that are off with your face. <laughs> Perfect, good. And we don't want to get too close to her um, eyes. You see what a nice arch she has. If we get arch. too close here, She'll get I'll droop. drop the right. Exactly. I'll drop the arch, and then it actually makes it very masculine and tired, and actually older looking. Even if the forehead is nice and smooth, just ruining that arch and getting that droop in the eye um, can not only be uncomfortable, but can kind of age you. Okay, another movement up. Now with her, her wrinkles go all the way into her hairline. And you can't see it because she's so numb. I put a Is that of hereditary? I think so. I think we have um, definite patterns for facial um, expression. Right. Right. And as we get older, they get etched in because those muscles just keep working and working. Yeah. So people always ask me, how long do these blebs last? And they last a couple hours at the most and then they go oh. away. Now give us that big strong frown. There you go. Relax. Again, and she also has this big central vein that crosses down the forehead, so we want to take extra care not to hit it to prevent bruising. But in our office, we have a rule of thumb if you bruise, just call us. We'll bring you right in and do a laser that helps get rid of bruising. Fast. And what laser is that? The V beam laser. Okay. But we really highly encourage everyone just to call us and not suffer alone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, crinkle your nose for me. 
Um, you can't really see it because she's not doing it. But when she smiles, I you know when during consultation, I can I can <laughs> right. You see things it. that right. They're not aware they're doing. Right. Exactly. Just, so she has actually a prominent amount of body lines. You see, as as I touch that, these wrinkles come to life. Yes. Um, so normally she crinkles her nose, and this is actually a great way to get rid of those. No one knows you have them done. No, you wouldn't. Perfect. Now the other thing that she loves to do is raise her eyebrows. Uh, and in consultation, <laughs> which I think consultations are so important because you know, obviously I've treated her before, but um, a lot of times you have to make sure that it's the right patient, right? Because if they're seeing something in their mind's eye oh. and that you cannot replicate as the dermatologist, right. then you have basically an unhappy patient. Oh, Dr. Kamala, that's the biggest thing to me. They have to have realistic expectations, yes. you know. So we're going to put a little bit here, the tail of the brow. And it just ever so slightly lifts her up. Mm. A little here and a little there, just to lift that up. Now I know that she really likes her nose, she, she, this is her natural nose, to be a little lifted. Yes. So a little trick is to put Botox there. Um, and the thing is, that makes you sneeze. So if you feel like sneezing, you just let me know. Ready? One, two, three. How was that? Good. Not bad. Yeah. Okay, good. All right, so now Beautiful we get to matches. do the Voluma. Notice how great this is. This is she's so youthful. Look how perfect she is. She has no, no loss under the eye, minimal nasal labial fold. So this is not. This is what we call augmentation, right? This right. is not exactly. correction. It's just There's a nothing to correct. She's right. young and beautiful. But here, she doesn't have that high arch cheekbone. Right. So that's the glam part we're gonna put in. Look at this, look how glamorous the side looks. That's amazing. And, and, and now that there's all this like new fancy makeup and the, all oh, the yeah. makeup artists all are doing. All the contouring, that's all that they teach. You them. take these cheekbones and they have to do minimal contouring. You can actually, it's so easy for you to contour it yourself because you have such a high arch cheekbone. You just go along the, right. the filler line. Right, exactly. And you and don't have to make it up. Anything, mm -hmm. right? So it right. actually saves a lot of time in front of the mirror because it's naturally like that. Now look how lifted she looks here versus here. We all naturally need that vector to pick us up. Now nothing about this looks synthetic though. People are going to think no. that's her natural right. high arch cheekbone and that's the beauty of it. Good. Let's it down. Perfect. Now she has a little asymmetry here. The first thing I'm going to do is correct that asymmetry. And it's so common, you know, it, it sounds really mean to say your face is unsymmetrical, but everyone is. And there was actually a really cool study. They showed newborns and early, early age kids pictures of people who had symmetrical faces and less symmetrical faces. And even babies prefer symmetry. Oh my god. We're goodness. so innately, yeah, programmed Isn't to look for something? symmetry. Uh huh. Yeah, we do actually a lot of mommy makeovers yeah. because, you know, and I never really appreciated like how fun that is. You know, now that I'm pregnant myself, you know, I'm just anticipating. When, um, when I'm able to do my fillers and my botulinum and do all my lasers and <laughs> all the cool stuff. Of course. Um, yeah, we have Althera, Thermage. As you know, we have cool sculpting. Yes. Um, you know, this year, there's so much to be done about necks. So we have tightening with Althera. Exactly. And then we have an Cabella. actual way, right, to be able to get rid of fat in the submental area. And before, there was only liposuction, exactly. which was invasive. But now, with either injections or attachment of a device, non-invasive ways, we can completely uh, change the way the neck fat looks, which right. is really, really cool. Beautiful. So for your lips, I'm going to have you, and we talked about it, okay, so just to summarize, what you wanted was to have a like bigger smile, right, mm -hmm. because you feel like your lips are too puckered in, right. you wanted it wider, and you wanted it more pouty, like that, mm -hmm. okay, perfect, if you can open your mouth for me, please, okay, okay. can you close your mouth for me, please? When doing lips, 
even though these are going to be non-natural, they're going to be augmented, it's really important to keep the ratio. So for Caucasian women, the ratio is very different than for an African American woman. And when you ruin that ratio between upper and lower lip, it automatically looks like a duck lip or it looks fake. And there's so much so, of it. So, yeah, right, and, right. and this is why I think a lot of people are scared to do their lip exactly. because they see porn stars and then they see really bad done lips. Right. So, again, she's swelling up a lot because obviously, like, the lift is a huge amount of volume filler. So this is why I treat her lower lip, because if I didn't, her upper lip would be too big for her lower lip, and they'll be 50-50, and that's more of an African-American lip than right. a Caucasian lip. So she will automatically buy it. Now, let's do her lower lip pout before we do the other side. And bleeding is so normal with this. Right. Even if you do everything that we tell patients to do, that's... You know, no aspirin, anti-inflammatories, any alcohol of any kind, it still bleeds. It does. Yeah. You know, I mean, lips are so vascular and they have such nerve supply to them. This is probably why kissing is so much fun. Right. Right? <laughs> but injecting them is not as much fun. No. <laughs> but you'll get more kisses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I always say, you know, when, when you're um, numb, and we obviously numb people to do this procedure, it may not be a hundred percent symmetric, you know, there might be a ten percent that looks symmetric now, but then it's not symmetric because the muscle kicks in um, and has its own pull. A lot of times people have a little bit of pull to one side. You know, like, look, I, if I put her lip to the side, it kind of stays there because she doesn't have all her... <laughs> she's a little numb. So, I tell people that once their numbing wears off and the swelling goes down, which is in a week or two, if they want more, we can always put more. And very, very rarely have I ever had to take anything out. Um, I've had one patient who said, oh my gosh, I want you to take it out, and we did. And then two weeks later she came in and she's like, I was wrong, I put it back in. <laughs> <laughs> but I have um, taken it out before because people have had bad injections. Right. And with bad oh, injections, sure. they either look like duck lips or there's a blue tint. All the hyaluronic acids have a blue tint to them. So um, you can see like a blue hue to to the skin to the skin. Right. Yeah. So she has a little bit of shadows here too. I'm just gonna slightly correct that. Everyone after the age of thirty has a little bit of that shadow. I don't feel badly then. Mm -mm, you shouldn't. <laughs> you look wonderful. And then, like I said, like if the chin, the prominent chin is really important. So we don't want to make this part of the chin too big because no, that masculinizes. It's here. It's exactly. Right here. Right here. We don't want to give her a man chin. We want to give her a feminine, delicate chin. So this is where it's at. All right, are you ready for your unveiling? I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> You should be. <laughs> and, and people have different levels of excitement because sometimes they're, if the first time, they're, I think, very, very scared to, uh, to, to see. Yeah. Right. So you're very much swollen on her lips. Okay. Okay. Your lips are going to look significantly smile. less. Gorgeous smile. So picture your less, lips less swollen, but ta da. Oh my gosh. I love it. Can't wait to try out my new lips. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Thank Here you. Go.